Hi, and welcome to our anatomical tutorial of the quadriceps using body paint. So, the first thing that I did was palpated the patella and then painted that in. The patella is a sesamoid bone, meaning it's seed like, and it's actually encased within the quadriceps tendon. It sits within the femoral groove. And its role is to actually increase the force that the quadriceps can exert by acting as a fulcrum and helping with leverage. It has a really interesting role and without it, you would find it really difficult to lift your leg into knee extension. The quads are a group of four muscles that sit on the anterior aspect of the upper thigh. Interestingly enough, when you think about the word quadricep, we take the word quad, meaning four, and seps, meaning heads, and that's because there are four heads to the quadricep group. One thing you'll notice as I'm painting is that all of the quadriceps insert on the same point. They all insert onto the tibial tuberosity. What happens is, is they share a tendon, and then that tendon encases the patella, and it then continues on to attach onto that tibial tuberosity, which is a bony bump on the front of your shin. The group of muscles I'm painting on here are the vastus group of muscles. They all originate onto the, off the femur itself, cross the knee, and insert into the tibial tuberosity. Now later on, what I'm going to do is add the rectus femoris over the top, and I'll talk about the differences between the vastus group and the rectus femoris. The naming process for this vastus group is really quite simple. All we do is have the word vastus and then add in the position of the muscle. So the vastus medialis is the vastus muscle towards the medial aspect of the leg or towards the inside. The vastus uh, lateralis is the outside quadricep, the muscle that sits on the lateral aspect of the upper thigh. And then finally we have the muscle that's in the middle, the vastus intermedius. And its name almost says in the middle, you know, the vastus intermedius. And there is our showcase for the vastus group of muscles. You can see them all attaching, uh, inserting into the tibial tuberosity. And I've tried to shade in the patella a little bit to make it look real. I've also added in the fiber orientation. You'll see that the, the vastus medialis, its, its fibers run in kind of an oblique fashion, kind of sideways on. Uh, and that, some people would refer to it as the vastus medialis oblique. The next thing I'm painting on here is the rectus femoris. It sits over the top of the uh, vastus intermedius and this muscle actually crosses the hip as well as the knee. Now the rule with anatomy is that if a muscle crosses a joint it must also have an effect on that joint. So the vastus, uh, sorry, so the rectus femoris not only creates uh, knee extension like the other three quadriceps but it actually also creates hip flexion as well. Uh, this is really interesting because it's one of the only hip flexors that as massage therapists we can actually get our hands on. So you'll notice that the fibers of the rectus femoris go up in this kind of arrowhead fashion. And we would call that bipedate. And what that means is you can get more muscle fibers into a smaller space, increasing the relative strength of the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris originates from the AIIS up in the hip and it actually inserts with all of the other quadriceps into that quadricep tendon or sometimes referred to as the patella tendon, inserting onto that tibial tuberosity that we mentioned earlier. For those of you wondering, the AIIS is a bony prominent in the hips. It's called the anterior inferior iliac spine and it sits just below the anterior superior iliac spine. It is the attachment point for the rectus femoris for its origin. And there we have it. 
all of the quadriceps will create knee extension and the rectus femoris alone will create hip flexion. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.